Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Most worthy chairman, respected elders, dear sisters, dear brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I stand before you humble by the enormous honor of addressing this. August Assembly, grateful for the privilege, mindful of the task at hand. The Holy Prophet of Islam, the perfect exemplar, the Prince of Peace, the pride of the universe, whose life was immaculate and whose character unimpeachable, came into the world as a mercy for all mankind. Yet, for centuries, the opponents of Islam have consistently ignored all that is patently good, noble, and beneficent in his life, example, and teachings, and have attempted to portray him, God forbid, as bloodthirsty and violent. Crude and offensive caricatures and cartoons have been produced in books and newspapers to demonstrate their malice and brazen attitude towards the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has also been grossly misrepresented by some of his own followers, both in medieval and present times, who have committed enormities and monstrous crimes in his fair name. It is my task today, within the short time at my disposal, to establish that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was indeed a messenger of peace and reconciliation. It is a great distinction of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the very religion he founded bears a name, the literal meaning of which is peace. The word Islam indicates the very essence of the religious system known by that name. The teachings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guarantee and establish peace in all spheres and at all levels, individual, social, economic, national, and international. One who becomes a Muslim not only enters a safe haven, but also guarantees it for others. The Holy Prophet ﷺ defined the Muslim as one whose word or deed caused no harm to others. Peace is the greeting of Muslims, and peace shall also be the greeting of the dwellers of paradise. That the great religions of the world are many in form, yet one in origin, is a truth now widely recognized and accepted. But before the advent of the Holy Prophet wasallam, that truth was quite unknown. It was from the desert of Arabia and from the mouth of the unlettered Prophet that the great truth was promulgated that our God is not the Lord of any particular tribe or nation, but of all nations and all peoples and that there is no people who have not been blessed with divine guidance through prophethood. God has been equally merciful and beneficent to all nations. If he raised the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, from Arabia, then he also raised Moses from Egypt, Jesus from Judea, Krishna and Buddha from India, Confucius from China, and Zoroaster from Iran. Peace be upon them all. Though their teachings were limited in scope and have subsequently been interpolated, these prophets were propagators of the same fundamental truths about the unity of God. Islam is the only religion which accepts the founders of all revealed religions as messengers of God and makes it incumbent upon its followers to believe in all of them. Nare Takbir! Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa! Islam Ahmadiyyad! Islam Ahmadiyyad! Nare Takbir! 
Come through the pages of all religious scriptures and you will not find a similar thing. A Christian may look upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa an imposter. A, a Jew may regard Jesus, peace be upon him, as a false prophet. A Hindu may regard Moses, on whom be peace, as a charlatan. But a Muslim ceases to be a Muslim the moment he fails to accept all of them as prophets of Allah. This is the most practical step Islam has taken towards establishing an atmosphere of peace and goodwill among the followers of all religions. Since the creation of man, no prophet other than the holy prophet of Islam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, has brought such a teaching. Respecting religious sentiments is another invaluable lesson taught to us by the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once during his lifetime, a Muslim and a Jew were involved in an argument. Both claimed and counterclaimed the relative superiority of their respective prophets. It appears the Muslim contender may have made his claim in a manner which wounded the susceptibilities of the Jew. As he approached the Holy Prophet wasalam, and lodged a complaint against the Muslim. Upon hearing the complaint, the Holy Prophet wasalam, admonished against being unmindful of the religious sentiments of others. Do not exalt me above Moses, he declared. This is despite the fact that the Holy Quran declares him superior to all prophets. Such were the high standards of decency and courtesy which the Holy Prophet wasalam, required of his followers, even in the throes of a heated theological debate. The Charter of Freedom, which he granted to the monks of St. Catherine's Monastery, Mount Sinai, in 628, that is the 60th after Hijra, is perhaps the best illustration of the Holy Prophet's desire for interreligious peace. This monumental document is unprecedented in the history of mankind. It states, This is the document which Muhammad, son of Abdullah, God's prophet, warner, and bearer of glad tidings, has caused to be written so that there should remain no excuse for those coming after. I have caused this document to be written for the Christians of the East and the West, for those who live near and for those of, of distant lands, for those Christians who are living presently and for those who will come after, for those Christians who are known to us and for those as well who we do not know. Any Muslim violating or distorting what has been ordained will be considered to be violating God's covenant and will be transgressing against his promise and by doing so will incur God's wrath, be he a monarch or an ordinary subject. I promise that any monk or wayfarer who will seek my help in the mountains, in forests, deserts or habitations or in places of worship, I will repel his enemies with my friends and helpers, with all my relatives and with all those who profess, profess to follow me and I will defend them because they are my covenant. And I will defend the covenanted against the persecution, injury and embarrassment of their enemies in lieu of the poll tax they have promised to pay. If they prefer to defend their properties and persons themselves, they will be allowed to do so and will not be put to any inconvenience on that account. No bishop will be expelled from his bishopric, no monk from his monastery, no priest from his place of worship and no pilgrim will be detained in his pilgrimage. None of their churches or other places of worship will be desolated or destroyed or demolished. No material from their churches will be used to build mosques or other houses for the Muslims. Any Muslim doing so will be regarded as recalcitrant to God and his prophet. Monks and bishops will be subject to no poll tax or indemnity, whether they live in the forest or in the rivers, in the east or in the west, in the north or in the south. I give them my word of honor. They are my promise and covenant, and will enjoy perfect immunity from all sorts of inconveniences. Every help shall be given to them in the repair of their churches. They shall be absolved of wearing arms. They shall be protected by the Muslims. Let this document not be disobeyed till judgment day. Signed, Muhammad, the Messenger of God.